Hey everyone, it's Ben Hansen. I'm a UAP researcher and TV host, and I want to tell you about Parapod Festival. So this is a really unique event. It's a film festival combined with speakers on Bigfoot, paranormal, UFOs. I'm going to be speaking on April 1st at the Hyatt Regency in Santa Clarita, California. The night prior, I'm going to be leading in Night Vision Skywatch. So there's a lot of events, cool stuff. Check it out. Go to parapodfestival.com for tickets. This is truth be told. That not only are there reptilians here. New evidence of UFO fleets. We were close to nuclear war. To help you transform so that you can live your highest truth. We're not being told just because we're not ready for it. The stations of frequency, vibrational. The, uh, I was a homicide detective with LAPD. UFOs increase um, visitations. We've all heard about the near-death experience, the light, seeing angels, seeing loved ones, and returning with messages. But some people don't know how to use those messages. They don't know how to interpret messages. Well, today's guest is one of those beings that has experienced the light and the other side several times. Best-selling author Daniel Brinkley is back to talk about his upcoming appearance at Conscious Life Expo. And he's going to be talking about the necessity of seeing yourself as a light bearer. If anyone can change, if anyone can go from darkness to light, this man is the one that can explain it all. I'm excited to have him back on Truth Be Told. So let's get started. I'm Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. Please welcome back to Truth Be Told Studios, the one and only best-selling author, Daniel Brinkley. There he is. There he is. <laughs> It's so good to see you. It has been a while, and uh, I have to say I loved when I got the message that you could do the show today because you're one of my favorites of about 700 episodes that I've done of Truth Be Told. So welcome back. Well, what what makes it a favorite? Well, it's just, I, I think it is your personality, and you know it, there's people in your life that you may not see them that often, but you just feel like a good connection with each other and that's one thing that you've always been so kind and embracing and and uh like you said in the in the in the intro it's you know you you took some situations that could be really bad for some people but you've turned it around and now you're helping millions of people all over the world so it just it, yeah that's why it makes me one of your you're my favorite one of my favorite people to interview and had on my show so well i always believed in you tony Oh, you know, when you. I've been out, everybody, if you know me, I mean, I'm Daniel Brinkley, and I've been dead so many times, <laughs> it's like a comedy routine. <laughs> and I understand, and I understand the nature of transition, struck by lightning, open heart surgery, mm. brain stir surgery, struck by lightning, open heart surgery. Okay. And in the course of that, having two death experiences, but having three near death experiences. Mm. And the last time I was dead was in 2018. Wow. And then you add that I've been a hospice volunteer for 45 years, and I spent 37 years in the VA and building the largest end of life care volunteer program for dying veterans in American history. And putting 37 years at the bedside and accruing more than 34,000 hours at the bedside in palliative end of life care and help co write the standard end of life care model used wow. by the Veterans Administration today. So I understand death and palliative care and the process of what happens to go from this world to the next, but also to come back. And to look at what families see and do as we enter this stage of life where we all know someone that's a baby boomer or a little older. We all know someone and we've all watched what the pandemic has taught mm -hmm. us. And we're trying to acclimate ourselves to this thing called death because it's around us everywhere. Well, knowing that December the 19th, 2000 and 22, an event occurred in a magnetic flux 
in the Earth's geofield, okay, that was recorded, dawned in the mystical era, hmm. the move from the third dimension into the fourth dimensional reality. Oh, wow. We now live in a fourth dimensional reality. We may still see the lingering <clears throat> natures of a three dimensional reality. Okay. But our cell phone proves that we are not there. <laughs> it's not there. The fact that you can construct A and I and uh, artificial intelligence that can research billions of bits of data and information and compile it into a, a, an expose of the nature of reality. Mm. You're seeing the remnant. So for me, if I can get people to pay attention to that, they're light gray bearers, which is what I believe is a great, powerful and mighty spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose. Mm. You were chosen to be here and you chose to be here in the story. No more talking <laughs> in them. So if you take those as certain facts, Tony, and let that be the facts, then I, I understand in the nature of reality from being a guy that can raise himself from the dead and have done it consistently because I believe in where we are in the dawning of an age. And I take pride to be existing with all the stuff I go through to be a light bearer as the birthing of this age. And so if you know what I know, which is what the program is about, if you know what I know, then you have viewpoints that you can use in situations that I will show you how you yourself can be insightful knowing that you are a great, powerful, and mighty spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose and that you chose to be here, but more importantly, you were chosen because the divine force believes in you right. to do your part to help create the greatest love and the greatest patterns of intention for greatness and purity and wonderment in the, in the birth of an age. Or World War III, the people who want to look at reality, the President of the United States said three months ago that if he sent tanks into Russia, he would be declaring war. Right. Wednesday, we're going to send tanks. He said he was sending them. Right. That is a reality check. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not a Freudian slip. <laughs> Anybody who understands that kind of stuff, that's putting it out there and watching people's reaction and then measuring that. Okay? I get it. So to see yourself as a light bearer based on specific rules, specific rules, Right. I'll be right. I will show you that you're insightful. I will show you you're a great, powerful, and mighty spirit to be with dignity, direction, and purpose. And I'll show you that you were chosen to be here and that you chose to be here. And you should be proud about it. Okay? And you should take <laughs> my viewpoint of it because I wouldn't be telling it to you if I didn't think it was true and right. And I had not checked it out four times while I was getting myself up from the dead. Hmm. I mean, if you understand this reality, Tony, what the Great Book of Judgment is, or the Hall of Records are, it exists. I call it the panoramic life review. But you will see your life pass before you in a 360-degree panorama. Wow. That you would watch it from a second-person point of view as if you were your own best friend. So you see the nature of how funny you are and how silly you are, but there's no ego your best friend making fun of you doing something stupid doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's just celebration. And then you literally become every person that you ever encounter. And you feel the direct results of your interaction between you and that person. That means the universe is fair and just, and nobody gets away with anything. <laughs> right. Know, 
end of story. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So all you have to do is ask anybody who's ever had a near-death experience, did they experience their life passing before them? 99.99% of the time, the answer is going to be yes. Okay? That's what the answer is going to be. And then it's varying, discrete, the varying degrees of describing what that experience was like to them. <laughs> okay? So knowing this, then I I know in the start of a show because I'm early on Friday. Right. And I kind of wanted to be there because I wanted to put my kind of blessing and my kind of thoughts for the people who show up so that they get the absolute most out of this experience at this particular time, at this particular point, when we're just a month away from moving into the fourth dimension. Well, I mean, let me ask you this, because it sounds like going into a fourth dimension is almost like going to another planet with a different atmosphere. How, I mean, it may not be that climactic, or, but how, how do we prepare for something like that? Because we may not necessarily wake up the next day and go, I feel like I'm in a new dimension. But how do we prepare ourselves for this new reality? First, you make sure that I'm telling the truth. <laughs> number one check it out right right <laughs> number two if i say we're there we're there <laughs> and how would i know <laughs> if anybody people who know me tony know that i wrote a book 28 years ago wow that i call the boxes of knowledge based on me seeing future timelines mm -hmm. not i didn't believe in prophecy and futures and stuff like that <clears throat> But I saw timelines that I was existing in, and I saw events that would come to pass from 1975 to now. Hmm. And I put them in 12 boxes. We're in now box 12. 28 years ago, based on the information I received when I was struck by lightning on September 17th, 1975. I wrote the book 20, uh, 20 eight years ago because I got mad <laughs> because I was watching how much pressure Raymond Moody was being put under because he brought out the fact that there was something called a near-death experience and some of us have had it and it was so traumatic and so awe-inspired and so amazing and so terrifying and so unbelievable and you had nobody to talk to about it and nobody to everybody was weird and raymond created this language and birthed this phrase no near-death experience that gave an avenue for people like me to talk about it and the world beat him to death raymond's magnificent and he's a philosopher and they attacked him he is a a, a medical doctor and he's a forensic psychiatrist hmm. And everybody in the world attacked him. And I just said, you know, hey, wait a minute. The world needs to pick on somebody their own size. That's what they need to do. And I decided it was me. <laughs> because Raymond came to, when, when it happened to me, I never heard of anything like this. And I was the meanest son of a bitch. And pff, people funny. <laughs> People are funny. I knock, you know, I thumb on. And I had this experience, Tony, and there was no escape from it. And the magnificent, I had no language, never heard of it, never seen anything about it. Nothing, nothing. And yet I'm paralyzed and I'm burning and I'm on fire and I can't, my eyes are burning and I'm crapping on myself. And, and it was horrible. And it's horrible. And uh, I knew I was going to die, but I was going to fight it to the last moment. And I knew I was going to get up because they said I never was going to walk again. I knew I was going to get up. Hmm. And Raymond gave me a moment because he asked the right questions. And in that place, I wrote Saved by the Light. And the title of Box 12, which is the final tw 12, it talks about World War III. It's called technology and the virus. Hmm. 
and I wrote it 28 years ago based on notes that I had written down in the Nifty Notebook with Paul Perry from 1975, and I wrote it in 1976. So anybody can go buy a 28-year-old book and tell me what I missed. Tell me what I missed. Read it and tell me what I missed. And tell me if it I didn't frame it the best I could. Right. With what I know and how many have I missed in the last 28 years? How many did I miss in the last 47? So my place is this. We have to recognize who we are. And it really doesn't matter whether you think you're in the fourth dimension or not. It really doesn't matter. That doesn't change anything. Right. You are there. <laughs> it really doesn't matter if you think you're not living in the next phase of what's called the procession through the equinox, which is 25,920 years, which is normally rounded out to 26,000 years as a full Earth cycle. We know this exists. We know it's true. We know it happens. We have a name for it. And then a field of magnetics that no one really explains where it came from, disrupted the magnetic field of the Earth, December 19th. Well, the Mayans knew what it did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nobody fooled the Mayans. <laughs> right. Okay? So, you know, for 9,600 years, they've been believing... Once that gets to be the point in... It's exciting to be there, Tony. And if people just trust me, you know, come on. I have I, I have nothing to gain except in life, there are certain things that I am an expert at. And one is death. Hmm. I'm an authority in palliative and end-of-life care and the process called death. And I write design programs that are nationally known and recognized by the Veterans Administration. So when you get to talking about that part of reality, I know as much as anybody. I have 34,000 hours at the bedside. I've been with 2,013 people going from this world to the next. And 350 three people taking their last breath. Wow. My oldest was 106. My youngest was eight. Oh, my gosh. And I've given my life to this. So knowing based on box 12 that death would become the most significant fear-based control mechanism that the world could use, and take it out of a religious context and put it where like in this recent event where you can't be around the people you love because they're dying because you might kill them. Can I ask okay. you, can I ask you a quick question? I'll go ahead and finish here. And then I have a question because it's dealing with the veterans in my, oh, listen, everybody who knows me know I say the same thing. I just got a really great program. <laughs> you do, but I love I it. Like I said, I, I love really it. Hard I love it. Well, then let me ask you this because one one thing that uh, my mother, I, 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 well, I've talked, I think I talked about my mother on my show before about uh, she died um, about almost four years ago. She was a veteran. She was in four years army, uh, 1957 oh, to 61. Of course, you know, back then when they get pregnant, they got to leave. Um, but she, she was in a VA nursing home and I've always, you know, you know, I remember like begging, you know, don't ever take my mom, don't take my mom, don't take my mom. About three months before my mother died, not only something that changed in my mother, but something changed in me where she got to the point in one day she, on the phone, she says, you know, I think I'm ready. And I was like, what, what, do you, what do you mean you're ready? She goes, I just think I'm ready to go. And I mean, we didn't have to really dig too much into the conversation. I knew what she meant. And I said, Mom, that's between you and God or, you know, creator or whatever, you know, ever anybody believes. But something changed in me to where I used to beg not for my, to take my mother 
to saying, give my mother peace and a transition. Shortly after that, you know, she declined and she left the body. And I, I'm curious on your thoughts of making that decision. Because people, you know, when you're young, you're like, oh, I don't want to live anymore. But there's a big difference in saying, I don't want to live anymore because life is hard than saying, I'm ready to go because I know it's my time. What, well, what, is, this, what is your thoughts what, on that? This is what would have occurred. Everybody in certain places seek permission. Right. So when you did describing this to me, this is what would have occurred. She would have seen a glimpse of the realm. Or she would have seen the faded or image of someone she did. who was safely already there. She saw her mother, and who she never met. Okay, now watch. I don't even have to, I know the game. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I have been with, Thousands of people, Tony, thousands. And I study, you know, I study every aspect <clears throat> of it. I watch them and I watch the families and the survival and the next four or five stages that happened after death. And I've seen so many different levels and dimensions and quantitative values of those dimensions. Right. And that I can measure so many things. So then she would have to have permission. And whoever that person was that had seen her, her mother, who she never knew, which finally she was fucking safe and she could go home. Right. Finally. So what had to happen was there had to be a transfer of energy to you hmm. in a way that you, given her permission, set you free. Hmm. It did. Okay. And it and that's did her. How it happens. Yeah, it, it it it's just weird how like not weird. It's it not was weird, Tony. It, yeah. It's not weird. Listen to me. <laughs> Maybe weird was the wrong word, but yeah. nobody dies. Oh yeah. This is the trap. Right. It never happens. Listen to who's telling you this. <laughs> right. right. Listen to who's saying this. Listen, to everybody. <laughs> I'm telling you. It never happens. It's a lie. It's fake news. <laughs> it's the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on a spiritual being. Designed as a light bearer in this dimension as it moves from the third to the fifth dimension. Hmm. And it'll do that in the next 2,500 years. And it does not matter what we're doing. And it does not care. Okay? What I need people to do is to align themselves to use that movement of the nature of reality to their greatest advantage so they can love more, breathe deeper, be freer, appreciate, <laughs> and support people's dreams mm. Mm. i love no beautiful i mean beautifully said and and but now my my father who's now 88 years old is his health has declined and and has parkinson's and I, i'm at the same point you know where my siblings are getting all freaked out i'm not getting freaked out at all i'm like listen what are they freaking out about i losing losing dad but i said i i Something happened, like I said, when my mom passed away, death looks completely different to me. I didn't experience my own death, but I experienced her and feeling that moment. I was actually driving across Kansas trying to get to her, and when they told me, I felt it. I knew I knew something, and so our connection was so strong. Um, it was like a, a, a release of energy that was not like no, no other. It was mama, watch. Oh, yeah. When your mother saw, man, her mother, she had safety. Yeah. From the other side. Yeah. And she was home for the first time as long as she'd been alive on this side. Yeah. That's power conversion. Okay, so the very moment that she transitioned after she had talked to you, which was you giving her permission to go, I think it's time. She's telling you she's ready. I told you 
what must have happened. She either glimpsed the other realm or somebody had come. And you said her mother. <laughs> yeah. It was just me narrowing down, listening to you, what had to have happened in order for this to happen. Because it was her mother's energetic pattern that was interceded to cause the transition in you mm -hmm. to be at peace. So it wasn't your mother, and it wasn't something you felt. It was the power of her mother mm. who had come to get her child, oh, relaying nice. to that she had to get you to give her permission to let go when she said, I think it's time. And you said, Mom, that's between you and the son. That you said between you and God, but that's not quite how it went because you, you wind a little bit in there, but you <laughs> got around to that. Yes. Okay. So right there is the transition of the energy. Yeah. Divinity yeah. is glorious, Tony, and the absolute magnificence of being able to watch reality unfold and to be able to see how it operates like, like people who grow flowers to watch one, a little seed turn into a beautiful flower, and to be able to watch that mm. becomes important now because the dimensions are refining. And that means because of who you are, because of who you are, and because of why you were chosen and why you chose to be here, <laughs> you have higher access to these levels of energetic understanding right. now because the dimension is here. It's not where we used to have to meditate and contemplate and alpha and data and <laughs> study our navels up on the mountains <laughs> right. for a thousand years, okay? It's come to, to get to it, it's come to us. <laughs> okay? yeah. You didn't have to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it, it comes to us, and I'm going to work it. <laughs> right. <Okay? laughs> you know? Right. Don't let, don't let me know, okay? Don't yeah. let me know that if we all are sitting here listening to this program tonight and knowing that on last Wednesday, the Germans and the President of the United States committed to World War III mm. against Russia. That's what happened, okay? So us realizing that, us realizing that is the most important point of the fourth dimension on nature and the choices that we're going to make since Wednesday hmm. because the German minister went and said in English that she was going to she was sending tanks because we all know we're fighting Russia and she wasn't going to do it until America committed the Abrams tank yeah I remember that okay. yeah. now when you stop to think about that I think that's funny. Why? We're living in the fourth dimensional reality, and I'm old. And to think that I would in any way allow that to happen for, uh, and for give back any support in any way based on the Ukraine or any other reason on earth, I would know that people have gone crazy. <laughs> that what we're doing is insane. Yep. And the reason I can deal with it, Tony, is we're in the 11th year of a new age. And on December the 19th, we moved into the fourth level, the fourth system, not third dimensional, but it's fourth dimensional. Okay. You still have a body. Okay. And then you ask, how do you pay attention? You pay attention to your breathing and the regulation of your breathing. You pay attention to your blood pressure. Okay, and that's what you pay attention to. All right, they become active parts in your everyday life, and then you pay attention to taking trace measures. This is what you do. Okay, then I have this thing called the fourfold path that structures a reality. Hmm. You put it on the refrigerator and you just check it off. It's not crazy, it's not complicated. Just check it off, do the stuff, check it off. And you will be amazing how intuitive and perceptive you become because you will harmonically and intentionally using a system 
that matches the fourth dimensional system of reality to achieve a goal that benefits humankind and you are the recipient of the appreciation. They're it, systems. They're it, not crazy. Right. They're right. not, uh, they're not, they don't move. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think that the sun's not going to come up in the middle of a cold winter night. Guess what? It does. <laughs> Unless you're in the Antarctica. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got four months of the sun not coming up. <laughs> okay. But you got three and a half months of the sun not going down. So you got to always remember when you tell that hand as a, a, a place to punctuate a reality, Tony, you always make sure that there is a blend in reality. What, I so enjoy talking to you. I love talking to you too. And, and what this reminds me of, it's I'm not saying you're old because you're not. We're just we're about the same age, 32. But um, but uh, it reminds me of when you're when you're asking your your grandpa for advice that's been married for 78 years with the love of his life about a relationship uh, with spirit. And uh, I think what you're teaching people is you know you've had to experience death to wake your spirit up and your soul up where you're teaching pe people, you don't have to die to learn what I've learned. And how to use it. Yeah. And how to use it, which is great. Okay, but, you know, <laughs> all that's all that other stuff is just talk. talk. Right, right. You know, it's just somebody talking. Okay. <laughs> Come to the class. Right. Sit there and, and try me. Right. <laughs> right. And watch this. I can prove unequivocally without a question that you are a great, powerful, and mighty spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose by asking you three questions. Who do tell? And you, <laughs> I'm not. You have to come to the program. Oh, dang it. <laughs> you know I will, you're but. I'm going to give away the good stuff because what? <laughs> if there is a person who can prove to you based on his own rules, very de definitive, great, powerful, and mighty spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose. Okay. And definitively that that is what you're going to prove to yourself. The rules of what I'm about to say to you. You're either going to prove to yourself or you're not going to prove to yourself. Okay? And that's the only person that really matters to you. And then I hit them. <laughs> I win. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't even have a chance. But the fun part of that, Tony, is what people do once that, that moment happens. You know, once that you're in that flow, you know you're in that flow, and you can pay attention to your breathing. You can understand how intention operates based on what I call the full, full path. Mm. You know, there's a way that you look at reality and what you see when you look at the reality from that way gives you a so much larger vision of what it really is. So you make better decisions, smarter choices, and things that are designed to make you afraid. What are you going to do to me? What? <laughs> no you don't scare me you think I don't know what pain is and you don't think I don't know what being a a, a brutal uh, narcissistic I'm not quite a psychopath but <laughs> power, power was how hard you could hit and how fast you could do it as opposed to embracing the nature of reality and having the absolute joy of knowing you are who you are at the right place at the right time. And that, the, that with that being a fact, what am I going to do next? <laughs> you know? What great. am I going to do next? <laughs> well, do you mind if I ask you a question from the chat room? It's got some people. Anything. Come Perfect. On, anything. Well, you kind of. You, you except if they would if they would believe one thing. Tell them. And I absolutely love them, and I absolutely appreciate that they are interacting in this chat room today. Mm. 
good or bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I always appreciate, appreciate everybody tuning in. I always call oh, no, them. No, I do, because I'm a part of them and they're a part of me. Yeah, I call them my co-host. Uh, well, the, I mean, you kind of touch on this a little bit at the Expo, Conscious Life Expo, which you're going to be uh, uh, doing a presentation, and it's going to be between, uh, 10th and the 13th uh, coming up here in just two weeks. I can't believe it, so I'm happy I'm going to get to see you in person. But will be a lot of hugging and kissing. Oh, yes. No tongue, though. No tongue. Um, <laughs> well, maybe it all depends on the mood. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, you never know, I, never know. I never got my booster, but I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but you touched on this a little bit. He says, what happens? And I'm sure you get this question a lot because, you know. Ask, ask the question, Tony. So the question is, when what happens to people that kill themselves before their actual allotted time? I'm sure you've asked, have been asked this many times because that's a very religious thing in the Bible about it's a sin and you're going to hell and all that stuff. So let's. If you don't mind touching on that question, that'd be great. And that's from Kevin, by the way. Okay, well, first, there's a lot of reasons why people do that. There's not just one simple reason why people do it. Remember, there are a thousand different reasons for why someone chooses to kill themselves. Okay, the group that I would focus on first is this. Between 37 and 50 veterans of the United States military kill themselves every day in America. Yeah. And 83% of them are attached to the VA in some kind of program. Okay. Now, whatever causes them to kill themselves is of an extreme importance to me. So I understand suicide and euthanasia. Euthanasia is about a choice that I wrote about it in the book, Tony. I already talked about this, everybody. Nothing happens to anybody. You have free will when you come into this existence. That's one of the lures to come into this dimension to be a light bearer, okay, or practicing being a god. One of the lures is free will, okay, to not have to know that, you know, you can do what you want, it's free will. And the other is to feel separate from and to be able to hold something and embrace it, what is in the third dimensional physical matter, to be able to touch it as though it is separate from you. <laughs> I know that sounds silly or maybe not as cool as it should sound, but <laughs> it's me explaining how I know it works, Tony. It's not, it's separate from it, so I can form an opinion of it. I know it's a part of me because it's a human and we're humans on the earth, but I'm still separate from it, okay? <laughs> so all the illusions that we create in the spiritual world for why we wish we were whatever else it is we would, would choose to be gets the chance to play itself out here in this reality. So everybody wants to come to this. Everybody wants to come to this. One. Okay? <laughs> you know? So, so nothing happens except in the panoramic life of you. You made a commitment to come to breathe X amount of breaths. The breath that you breathe in and the breath that you breathe out in the space between breathing in and breathing out, the world changes. If you breathe in, before you breathe out, you stop. And in your eight sinus cavities, the power of the divine nature, which air represents, enters those chambers, and they're held and the universe is measured within the framework of who you are as a great, powerful, mighty spiritual being designed to sit here by a divine force that set you in motion to be who you were to achieve certain goals as you are practicing being a god, being helpless and being alone. Okay, those are the rules to enter this system. So you'd have to have been a god wherever you came from to be able to have the opportunity to come in. In the story, it does not matter what you think. This is how it works. Hmm. And I've watched it over 47 years. Okay. <laughs> I could cross into levels of consciousness, Tony. There, it's, you know, I don't have that, all those barriers. Right, right. That most people have. I don't have them. You know, <laughs> people who know me, they know how I am. And when we have this chance, and it's a world war. If that's not a calling, I do not know what could possibly be a greater calling than that for us to come together 
in two weeks for us to start thinking today about what we think of that, what we think of a war, okay? What mm -hmm. we think about it and not to turn away from it and to decide what you think about it. It is insane in 2023 what's going on in Ukraine. It is insane. That is insanity. And the people of the world should have stopped it, sat down, talked it through. The World Health Organization, the, the World Economic Forum, if they and sat down and done something. That is the only logical thing to conclude, but it's not going to happen unless we think it. Right. Unless we get World <clears throat> War III today and we realize that we are the powerful, fourth dimensional, great, mighty, powerful spiritual beings forming an opinion about something we don't like <laughs> and that we refuse to accept it as a reality. And then let us be guided by whatever nature that aligns ourselves to that force to do whatever it takes to make that impact known. I ring them up. I call my congressman. I'm not scared of them. I don't care. And right. I talk on this radio show. Right. <laughs> you know, because I'm not afraid. I, I, I listen to what goes on, and I have a system to measure it by that anybody can read and test it. And we sit here where the battle for the souls of humankind being fought in healthcare is exactly where I said it was in 1976. Hmm. Okay, and I've known Raymond Moody since 1976. I've known and been right next to the near-death experience from its days, in its early days of Raymond publishing uh, Life After Life. And I have studied this <clears throat> to the point of obsession, okay, <laughs> for that 47 years. And I am so excited to be alive that I have a chance to stop a world war. Mm. <laughs> right. And I think we should all, you know, applaud uh, everyone that wants to put put the light out to the world it, it, my question is is how do you i mean i don't want to get so i don't want to get polit political all but like people like I'm not gonna be political well like people like putin and you know the Saad, saddam hussein's how do you how do you ever i, I i've known a couple people that they were not the nicest people when they were younger you know like look at you you said you were not a nice person but as you got older you're you've, you've you know, had these near-death experiences you've changed now you want to be a beacon of light. And sometimes as we get older, the wisdom kicks in. But sometimes you see people like these leaders that the egos and the power, you know, blinds them from the light. How do you how do you help? Tony, 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 Tony. Yeah, Tony, if school you see, me. If you, see the, if you see the face, that's not the power. Okay. Whoever you see, that's not the power. Okay, the power is behind all of that. Yeah, that's Remember, true. That is true. There are levels of power. True. There are levels of power that most people cannot comprehend. Yeah. That structures itself around the evil. Right. <laughs> okay? There's no question. There is not no maybe about it. Yeah. And child trafficking and all of that stuff and the business of it and blood for youth and all the stuff that's everywhere. No question. All right. So when you have the place of where the power really is, the power is in spiritual resistance. It is it an intention that is a spiritually to resist it. Okay, because then you draw upon forces of energy and you draw upon things that are defensive mechanisms that come to your aid. Mm. Okay, and once you start to look at that field of presence and nature, 
you begin to make a difference. You are guided. You will know. You won't have to meditate by the tree to the apple hit you in the head. Right. Because we're in the fourth dimension. <laughs> we're in that fourth dimension now. If you if you catch that twenty minute nap, you're gonna know the answer. <laughs> it's gonna happen, you know. It's gonna happen. And if it's gonna happen, then you just line yourself up to catch it. I mean, I, I get excited about the the Conscious Life Expo because it's the first time in the new era. And this new thing that you're doing on March the 31st, I mean, the growth, the outward growth of what what's, what Quicksilver is doing and what you're doing and giving people an opportunity to come and interact among each other mm -hmm. and feel the comfort of like-minded natures, okay, and to be able to look at ourselves from a, an organizational point of view because uh, we we span the entire gamut of reality, <laughs> right. you know, from people who look like cavemen <laughs> to uh, fairy gamo suits to to fairy princesses to you know <laughs> just watching the beauty of, of all the things that get to be created. I get excited. Well, so so nothing happens in suicide. Except in the panoramic life of you, you get to see the rest of your life and the choices that you could have made or could have made, and you get to see it because it was already played and set in motion based on choices that you would make, that the divine anticipated that you would, and that's how you got chose to come here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> um, well, unfortunately, our time's almost up, but I, I do want to you to talk about a little bit about what you're going to be talking about I and mean, we touched on it, the light bearer necess uh, necessity of seeing yourself as a light bearer um and you're going to be doing uh friday february 10th 2 p.m to 3 30 in yeah. the uh, room la jolla and uh, you can get the tickets in advance please because i've seen daniel if you haven't seen daniel in person it is it is almost a uh, seeing the light you know, in the room. So uh, you, you bring dynamics and just, Tony, you know what? All I ask everybody is to take a deep breath. And from, and if it moves you and you feel that uh, ground in yourself and having a serious series of grounding mechanisms, to look yeah. at yourself from benefits you, then do not, not come. Because I want a person to feel whether it's the right thing for them. Right, exactly. I, I trust that they'll know. And, you know, if it, if it moves you to come, I, I, I will not let you down. If you show up and you pay that money, I will not let you down. Well, Daniel, you're definitely, we shouldn't wait so long for you to come back on the show. Uh, so... Now that I have your email, I'm going to be emailing you all the time. No, <laughs> well, you know what, Tony? Anytime that I can help you, because I have loved your audience when you first started and all the reasons that you became you and oh, all those glorious you. moments of the evolution of a consciousness about relationships and who loves who. Yeah. And I've appreciated and admired it. And anytime that I can be of value to your audience. You do not hesitate to contact me. You just don't do it, though, no? because if I can help, I know a lot about health care, and I know a lot about how governmental systems work and things operate and, you know, smart things to do based on certain things that go wrong in life. Mm -hmm. And so if I can be of any service, let me be a service. But everybody, feel to come to Conscious Life and check out this thing that Tony is doing March the 31st. Well, yeah, first, you know, let's, we're going to make sure everybody gets their tickets for conscious life, February 10th through 13th at the LAX Hilton. Please come see Daniel. And then yes, please come to a Parapod festival, March 31st through April 1st. We even have a, the, the first day is a film festival and uh, we're going to have a stargazing at Mentryville. It's a ghost town right outside of Santa Clarita, California. And we're going to be touring with Patty Negri, who is a, considered a good witch. Um, uh, she is going to tour a, a haunted house with us or a house that's considered haunted. 
And then, of course, we have on April 1st, you can come and see uh, Jimmy Church, Linda Moulton Howe, who's receiving, uh, receiving the Media Legend Award, Billy Carson. Uh, we have uh, the Sitting Bull's great-grandson, uh, Lenny, uh, Ernie LaPont, and doc, uh, Dr. Robert Schock, and the list goes on and on and on. And we hope you guys can come and be a part of it. We have true crime. We have podcasters doing s- segments. We have Native American dancers uh, doing demonstration of their their dances and what it means. So I, as you can see, I get excited about it because it's everything that I want to go see. And uh, and I hope you guys get your tickets. Go to parapodfestival.com. And uh, Daniel, thank you so much. And I can't wait to give you a big old hug at uh, Conscious Life Expo. I look forward to it. All right. I love you and I appreciate you and to your whole audience. Thank you, everybody, for spending time with Tony and I. And I hope to see you at the Conscious Life. And if I don't, I love you very, very much. And he means it, too. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, and come and see us every Friday. Uh, I have some great guests coming up, some from Conscious Life Expo. And then also uh, we, Bonnie Burkert, who is also uh, part of Truth Be Told Family, Truth Be Told Transformation on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Monday, we have Robert Hensley that does the Minute Man Report for Truth Be Told. And then we have a brand new Truth Be Told show, the Spanish version, the Latin version. We have Metaphor going to be hosting uh, all in Spanish. So if you guys speak Spanish, please uh, support him. But until next time, much love, and we'll see you uh, right here again on Truth Be Told. Take care. This has been another episode of Truth Be Told. Thank you so much for watching. Recorded live at UBN Go Studios in Burbank, California. Join us on social media, Facebook, Truth Be Told Radio, Instagram, Truth Be Told Paranormal. Go to Truth Be Told Worldwide for more information on upcoming shows.